the mechanics section of the 2020 physical science physics paper starts with question 1.2 in multiple choice which reads the gravitational acceleration on the surface of planet x with mass m and radius r is g the gravitational acceleration on the surface of planet y with mass 2m and radius one half r is and then we are given four options the gravitational acceleration as a result of a planet's mass and radius we remember is given by the formula g is equal to the universal gravitation constant multiplied by the mass of that planet divided by the radius of that planet squared where that this can be the formula for the original planet where we are now trying to find what the gravitational acceleration on the new planet is and so the universal gravitation constant remains the same but the mass now becomes double the original mass and the radius of that planet becomes one half of the original planet squared both of those would result in the gravitational acceleration increasing and we can show that by saying we can take the factor of two out to the front of this equation and one half r squared becomes one over four r squared which can then become or be simplified to two times four times g m over r squared or just eight g m over r squared where we can then see that this gravitational acceleration is exactly the same as our original gravitational acceleration and therefore we can say that the new gravitation is equal to eight times the original gravitational acceleration which makes the correct answer here option d question two reads a 20 kilogram block resting on a rough horizontal surface is connected to blocks p and q by a light inextensible string moving over a frictionless pulley blocks p and q are glued together and have a combined mass of m a force of 35 newtons is now applied to the 20 kilogram block at an angle of 40 degrees with the horizontal as shown below the 20 kilogram block experiences a frictional force of magnitude 5 newtons as it moves to the right at a constant speed so there are a number of things that are important to realize immediately and the first is that they've told us that the 20 kilogram block is on a rough horizontal surface and that rough surface means that there is a frictional force that is acting on that object as it moves or attempts to move the second thing that is important to notice here is that we are told that this force is applied at an angle of 40 degrees so there's going to be a horizontal and a parallel component of that force that acts on the block and then the final thing is the note here that this block is moving towards the right and because we can see this is a single system the 20 kilogram block moving to the right means that the blocks p and q must be moving downward because they are linked by that light inextensible string question 2.1 asks us to define the term normal force where the definition as per the guideline document is the perpendicular force exerted by a force on an object in contact with the surface question 2.2 asks us to draw a labeled free body diagram for the 20 kilogram block important to remember that a free body diagram always is just a dot that represents the center of mass of the object this object has mass and therefore there is a force of gravity or a weight force that is acting perpendicularly or vertically downward this object is on a surface which means that there is a normal force that is acting vertically upwards or perpendicular to the surface the object has a rope or a string that is pulling it to the right so there's a tension force pulling it to the right and then importantly this object is moving to the right which means that there is a frictional force that is acting to the left on this object and that is in addition to the applied force that is acting at an angle of 40 degrees important once again to remember that a free body diagram must not show any of the components of that force but only the force 
itself. Question 2.3 asks, calculate the combined mass M of the two blocks. And so this is essentially a two body problem where it is best for us to treat it as two separate objects, two separate objects, each of which is acted upon by a net force and as a result has a certain acceleration. In this case, because we have been told that this is traveling at a constant speed, constant speed by Newton's first law means that the net force acting on each of these objects must be zero. Therefore, the objects travel at a constant speed. So for the 20 kilogram object, we write a Newton's second law expression, F net is equal to M times A, where the net force acting on this object is if we declare to the right as being our positive direction, the net force acting on this object is equal to the force that is pulling it to the right, that being the tension force, minus the two forces that are acting towards the left, which in this case are the friction force and the horizontal component of the applied force. Important here that it is not the entire applied force that is acting towards the left, but rather that we have this applied force that has two components, those being if a horizontal, the horizontal component of the applied force, and if a vertical, the vertical component of the applied force. And because we have here a right angle triangle, we can use trigonometry to solve for our unknowns there. This is then equal to the object's mass multiplied by its acceleration. And then we can then substitute the values that we do have here. We do not know what the tension in this string or rope is. We have been told that the friction force is five newtons and the horizontal component of that applied force as we can see here the applied force is adjacent or the adjacent side of this angle the adjacent angle is always calculated using cos and we've been told that the force has a magnitude of 35 newtons so this would be 35 cos of 40 and so we would write the horizontal component in here as 35 cos 40 and that is equal to the mass of this object multiplied by its acceleration once again we've been told that it is traveling at a constant speed and therefore the acceleration is zero we can then draw a free body diagram or we can then write a newton's second law expression for masses p and q since they are glued together we can treat them as a single object and we always start by writing a Newton's second law expression, F net is equal to M times A, where the net force here, again, because we have declared to the right as being our positive direction, that automatically means that downward must be positive because when the 20 kilogram object moves to the right, the object P and Q will automatically move downwards. So the net force in this case, or for this object is equal to the force pulling it downward, which is the force of gravity minus the force that is pulling it essentially upwards and that is the tension force again equal to the object's mass multiplied by its acceleration the net force or the force of gravity is the product of the object's mass and its gravitational acceleration and the tension once again is an unknown value at this point where once again the mass and acceleration of this object is zero or the acceleration of this object is zero. Now because we do not know the mass of this object we can leave this as m. Gravitational acceleration is 9.8 minus t must be equal to zero and we can now see that there is only one unknown in this expression and therefore we can solve for our tension in the rope and find that that is 31.81 newtons and then again because we know that this is all one rope the tension in this rope must be equal to the tension in this rope and that allows us to substitute the value m times 9.8 minus the tension that we have just found of 31.81 is equal to zero and that then allows us to solve for that 
unknown mass to find that it is 3.25 kilograms. Question 2.4. At a certain stage of the motion, block Q breaks off and falls down. How will each of the following be affected when this happens? Question 2.4.1. The tension in the string, choose increases, decreases, or remains the same. And what we hopefully can see is that our free body diagram for block P and Q only has two forces acting on it, the force of gravity and the tension force. And the tension force and force of gravity while this object is traveling at a constant speed must be equal to each other because that is the only way that the net force is zero. So as soon as the mass of this object decreases, which is what happens when block Q breaks off, the mass decreases, what that means is the force of gravity acting on this object is automatically going to decrease. And because the force of gravity pulling this rope downward decreases, that then means automatically that the tension in that rope is also going to decrease. So the answer to 2.4.1 is that the tension decreases and the main reason there being that there's less of a force of gravity acting downward on this object now. Question 2.4.2. The velocity of the 20 kilogram block and we are asked to explain our answer. And so we would immediately follow on from our previous question where we've realized now that since the tension in this rope has decreased, that means that the force pulling the 20 kilogram object to the right is also going to decrease. Now, since the force pulling it to the right is going to decrease, that means that there will now be a net force that is acting on this object and that net force is now going to be to the left again because the tension pulling it to the right has decreased where the applied force and the friction force have not changed so the force pulling it to the left remains the same while the force pulling it to the right decreases what that then means is that there is now a net force to the left there is now a net force acting to the left which means that this object is going to accelerate to the left and if it accelerates to the left that means that the velocity of the 20 kilogram object is going to decrease and our explanation would have been anything along these lines where, where we have either said that the object accelerates to the left or there is a net force to the left or as the tension force decreases the net force or acceleration is to the left anything where you explain that you understand that there is now a net force to the left therefore the velocity is going to decrease is an acceptable answer here the way that this question is marked any definition is always going to be marked according to certain words or phrases that are expected to be present it is important to gain an understanding for the guideline document and ensure that any definition is quoted as much verbatim or as verbatim as possible. A free body diagram typically awards one mark per force where there is negative marking. If a force is incorrectly added, then a mark is removed. Important to label every single force and label it with a common label and always a good idea to include a key that explains each of the labels. Question 2.3. A two-body system always starts with a requirement for a formula that must be given. That formula should be a formula as it is given in the formula sheet. F net is equal to MA. And then there is normally a mark either shared between the formula and then the expression that explains the net force for each object. And so it's important to write both of those steps as in this case, the mark was allocated one mark for either one of those, but sometimes there's a mark allocated for both separately. We then should show that we've calculated our horizontal component. It is advised to show this step. Normally, a diagram like this also helps the marker to understand what you've done and how you've arrived at your answer. And then once again, showing that you understand that a constant velocity means that the acceleration is zero. 
once you have found your correct tension you would then be awarded your next mark for correctly substituting that into your other Newton's second law expression for the second object and then the final mark for the correct answer. Once again, a correct answer can only be given a mark if the units are correct. For question 2.4.1, it is a one mark question and so one mark is awarded for decreases. And question 2.4.2, there was one mark for the velocity decreases and one mark for any kind of explanation, either saying that the net force is now to the left or the acceleration is now to the left. Anything that would explain question 2.4.2's answer.